Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're starting a new project, which is a chapel renovation. It's gonna be turning into a residential premises, and today we're gonna to be putting in the main risers. So if we start on the ground floor, this section here is going to be phase two. So the big open planned area is going to have cast iron radiators dotted around. And then we've got a kitchen going in here. Um, here's the boiler room. So this is where we're going to be starting. We're going to be running pipe work through here, and then up on the wall, up to the first floor. So there will be our risers. And then the majority of phase one is going to be this section down here. So. This part of the building at the moment, the client's residing in, so we're not actually doing any work. So that's the final phase. But phase one, we're gonna be running our risers into the first floor ceiling joists of this section. And then we're gonna be running hot colds, hot returns to each bathroom and ensuite. So here and here. And then we're gonna be installing an underfloor heating manifold somewhere on the landing here, and then running underfloor heating pipe work to every room individually and that'll be controlled by its own thermostat. So we're not actually gonna be installing the bathrooms here, we're just running the pipe work to each room, which I definitely prefer. So we'll get them in the ceiling ready for the builder, get them capped off, and yeah, we can start then, once we've got our risers in, putting everything into this boiler room. So this is the existing boiler room of this chapel and this oil boiler was originally temporarily plumbed in just to provide heating and hot water for the client that's currently living on site. So we're gonna be still keeping this room as the main uh, boiler room. We are gonna be reusing this Grand Vortex boiler on the left, gonna be moving it along slightly and the customer's also provided us with two 200 litre unvented cylinders which we'll be plumbing in on the right. Um, we're going to be incorporating a low loss header because we've got underfloor heating in several zones and as well as that hot water return etc so yeah it should be nice hopefully going to get this one all on unistrut and uh, make a nice job of it so the first thing we're going to be doing is just getting all the pipe work in and our risers up to the first floor joist level which is going to be coming through this hole here we've just made so we're going to be bringing everything through here getting all the pipe work up to locations first including the underfloor heating manifolds and Unusually, we're actually gonna do the boiler room last. Okay, so the first part of our job is to get the main risers in. Now, this is the other side of that boiler room cupboard, so we've knocked through here and all this brickwork is actually going to remain exposed, so we need to bend our copper through nice and neatly, mount it on Munson rings and then run it all the way up to the first floor joist level, which is up there. So these stairs are temporary, there's actually going to be a metal staircase fabricated for in here. So. We run them all the way up to the first floor joy space and then we can start branching off to each location from there. Okay, we've got our bends in now on the ground floor. As you can see, we've left enough slack poking through the boiler room so we can join on it to work. We're using months and rings at ground floor level because this pipe work is going to remain on display so it looks nice and neat.
Okay, so we've got the risers all in now. We've had to pull little offsets just to bring it into the depth of the button and the Celotex. That's then going to be covered in plasterboard and rendered. So we've run it all the way up here to first floor ceiling joist height and then from there we need to pull a few more bends and then we can branch off of MLCP. Okay, so we're at first floor ceiling height level now and Bailey's just getting the final bends up into the ceiling joist space. From there, we need to put in some wall ravens up here in the joist space and then we can start running our MLCP, which I'm about to start drilling the holes for here. So it's gonna be quite difficult to feed that through. We've got 25 mil MLCP pipe on a coil, so we're gonna to have to straighten it out and then drill quite big holes to get it through. Okay, so Bailey's bent the pipe work up into the first floor ceiling space now and run the pipe work along so we can transition into the MLCP. He supported it with the wall ravens which we've used before which we highly recommend. So I've got all the holes drilled now and we just need to go and wrestle a coil of 25 mil. Okay, so this is the MLCP pipe we're gonna be attempting to thread through the joist space. It's 25 mil, so the internal bore is similar to 22 mil copper. I've had to buy in a call because I couldn't get the big five meter lengths today unfortunately so it's going to be really difficult to wrangle it through the joists but it'll be worth doing because obviously it's ultra strong, we can use it on hot water return and also we can use a press gun on the fittings. Okay so these are some of the MLCP fittings we're going to be using. Uh, we actually luckily enough live next to a distributor of underfloor heating and MLCP pipes called Robins and they supply us with these. They're called Alpex F50s um, manufactured by this company here which I won't try to pronounce but they're definitely German. So on the left here we've actually got a push fitting which goes on to MLCP so this is still rated to the same as the um, crimp fittings so you can use these on hot water returns they're actually really good when you push them on um, to show that you push them in far enough there's a little green indicator that pops up here so sometimes if you're in a tight spot or the battery's dead on your gun they're actually quite handy this is your traditional press fitting so you've got two other rubber o-rings or silicone o-rings in there and these are U jaw size, so that's mainly what we use. We use M for copper and U for this, these press fittings. And then here you've got your transition fitting, so generally what we do is to go onto copper, we'll just use a press fitting on here. Okay, so we're starting to get the MLCP through the joist now and it is rather difficult because the pipe's so rigid, but we're just starting to transition now over into the copper. We've got the press fit elbows going onto those brass fittings that I showed you earlier. What you need to make sure is before you push these fittings on that you actually divert the pipe work. So you've got this type of tool here, you just push that into the MLCP, spin it around, divert it and make sure it's slide it nice and easy. And then what we do is we put these press fit elbows on here, mark the depth and then get them crimped up. So these elbows are an M press profile and these MLCP fittings are a new profile. Right, we're in the master on the suite now and this is where the hot and cold pipe work terminates. So you can see here that's where we've teed in the hot water return and we've just left some copper towels ready for the build to start first fixing the bathrooms. So we've pretty much got all the pipe work in now on the first floor. Let me just explain to you what each one is. So on the left hand side we've got the flow and return to the underfloor heating manifold. Next we've got the flow and return to the central heating radiators up in the loft, um, although that might not be happening, so we're just going to leave those capped. And then we've got hot, cold and hot return going to the bathroom. 